In his follow-up to The Chaser and The Yellow Sea, director Na Hong Jin has come up with a mystical flavoured serial killer story set in a small country town. At the centre of the whaling is a regional policeman, John Gu, played by Kwok Do Wan. He's a bumbler, a loser and a scaredy cat who doesn't seem to have the respect of his mother, wife or young daughter. Constantly late to crime scenes where previously law-abiding citizens have become brutal zombie-like killers, John Gu bats away the suspicions of his community that a Japanese ghost is haunting the nearby woods. But the murders keep on happening, and scaredy cat or not, he has to find the cause. From roaring currents onwards, there's been a disturbing trend towards anti-Japanese sentiment in commercial Korean cinema. Think of films like The Tiger and Spirit's Homecoming, and there's the excuse that the films take place during the annexation years. Now the difference is that The Wailing is set during contemporary times, which makes the film more problematic. Now it seems to me that one of the things that's driving this anti-Japanese sentiment in Korean cinema is the idea that it will appeal to the Chinese box office. You know, in a utilisation of that art of war adage, my enemy's enemy is my friend. Though he's the target of small town gossip, the alleged ghost, an unnamed Japanese fisherman played by Kunimura Jun, certainly seems to be up to something with his pet pit bull and his hobby of photographing the murderers before and after their hideous transformations. Running to a taxing 156 minutes, Na's latest film holds back its star attraction, Huang Jung-min, until the final hour of the piece, when he arrives on the scene as a shaman to exorcise the demons that have taken over John Gu's daughter. Huang gives a stunning performance that allows him to chew up the scenery and offers a surprising twist to this metaphoric depiction of the age-old resentments between Koreans and Japanese. The Wailing depicts, and then critiques, Korean demonization of the Japanese. But at the end, the film does a sudden backflip, which just makes you know, a nonsense of the film dramatically. Now, it could be argued, not very convincingly, but it could be argued that the film is actually pointing the finger at Korean audiences, telling them that they see just what they want to see. But the suddenness of the baffling ending seems to suggest that some interference has taken place. Whether that's interference at the studio level, or whether that's some kind of direct intervention from the government, I couldn't say. Many film industries from Hollywood and beyond have been subject to government pressures. Certainly in South Korea, the blockbusters such as Shiri and JSA would not have been possible without government support. The recent interference by the Mayor of Busan in the programming of the Busan International Film Festival over the Saywal documentary that proved embarrassing to the current presidency indicates that government involvement in Korean film will not always be benevolent. However, Despite its final letdown, The Wailing brims with superb set pieces, making it an unforgettable movie. That the film runs too long is not a new criticism of Na Hong Jin, it's just a pity that the length comes at the expense of the film's logistics.